welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and this one's going to be a bit different because I'm going to be discussing the, everything around the sort of the uh, electric cars and the future of basically of the new car market because just a, um, yesterday actually they released some sales figures in the UK showing that there was a Tesla Model 3 was the best selling car in the UK in April and in second place was the Jaguar I-Pace both um, battery electric cars market wasn't actually a normal month there was only 4,000 cars sold against 191,000 I think last year but it just shows you how there's a complete change happening in the car market at the moment. So I'm going to look at where I think we're, when we come out of this awful pandemic we're in at the moment and the, what's going to happen to the new car market and does the electric car solve the problems of global warming etc going forward. It is a subject that I am utterly fascinated with and I have been for some time. And I have to um, just show this because this is Sunday Times did an article um, on, on the house that we built in 2007 here. This is uh, dated 2008 because it's something I, I was fascinated with and we made the house all electric and didn't use oil. So I'm just going to look at the whole picture and discuss is the electric car the cure for global warming. Now the first thing to understand with this drive to electric vehicles is the manufacturers have been forced down this route from especially in Europe from 2020 they have to get to a fleet average of 95 grams and I've discussed the detail of this I'm not going to go into the full detail now but um, basically since the rules and how they test the car to arrive at this figure of um, grams per, uh, of CO2 per kilometre travelled were tweaked in 1718, it's next to impossible to hit the 95 gram fleet average with a conventionally powered car. But if they sell an electric car, it's a fleet average of the sales they achieve in 2020, then that adds to the average, that dramatically brings down their average because it's counted as zero emission. And that term, electric car being a zero emission vehicle, is what I'm basically going to expand on here. And there are two forms, basically, of pollution, I suppose, that we are concerned about from the private motor car. And one is CO2, which is grams kilometer, and then there is particulates. And this is about inner city um, pollution. There is this big drive to get rid of um, NOx and particulates in inner city uh, situations. And of course, an electric vehicle, because it doesn't have an engine, um, an exhaust pipe, has less emissions coming out of the exhaust pipe because it doesn't exist. So they are seen as the main way of getting inner city um, pollution down. But that CO2, I'm going to concentrate on the CO2. I'm going to bring it right down to local levels, to UK levels, and then we'll look at global uh, matter. Because the thing about CO2 that gets me is it's a global issue. The clue is in the name. Global warming um, concerns everyone. And this pandemic has sort of shown what happens when the whole world experiences something. And the pandemic is going to have a, new, a dramatic effect on the global CO2 produced in 2020 because the world is effectively stopped. Um, it's too early to see the figures yet, but they are talking about a 6% drop, I think, of CO2 in this year. Bring it back to the UK. And what gets me about this zero emission tag for electric cars, it's not true in the UK. And this drive to um, zero emissions by the government for 2050 and well earlier for um, no sale of um, piston driven cars from 2040 if not earlier is it's not really going to reduce the co2 if our power um, that we consume in the uk continues as it is uh, the latest figures for 2020 so there's going to be a lot of figures, I'm afraid, in this video. But uh, for 2020, we are heading towards 189 grams per kilowatt hour um, of electricity produced in the UK. So when you plug your electric car in, it's not, been, um, it's not consuming zero emission electricity, 189 grams. So what happens 
if you then drive your, um, well, we've got, uh, I've been driving around in an iPace for about um, six, seven months now. Um, I've used testers. You've seen some of the other videos we've tested here. I'm going to come with a ballpark figure of 0.4 kilowatts per mile is generally their consumption. Um, some are lower than that, others are higher. The plug-in hybrid Range Rover is near a 0.7 um, and the Tesla 3 and the BMW X5 we had were 0.3 something. So I'm going to say 0.4 as a sort of average um, number of kilowatts uh, per mile. Put that, you're then consuming 189 average CO2 um, for each kilowatt of electricity and you come out at 47.5 grams per kilometer driven in your electric car not zero 47.25 so half the fleet average so the first thing to understand if you do get an electric car on a co2 um, level you are reducing your pollution by 50 percent not a hundred percent that's the first thing to understand then in the UK, that average figure of 189 is made up of all the regions. And there's some really good information out there. And there's a map of the UK and it will show you what, how they got to that average 189. Um, nearest one I could find was from a few days ago and the UK average was 191 grams per uh, kilowatt hour. But the region where we are, and if you look on the map around Northampton time, um, it was 295 grams because our electricity doesn't all come from renewables. And there are certain areas that are heavily reliant on um, gas turbines, a little bit of coal, but very rare. Um, so the mix where you are in the UK varies. If you're in Scotland or um, where the big wind farms are, much lower than 189, but where we are, 295 grams. So my plugging my electric car in at 0.4 kilowatts per mile suddenly goes to 73 grams per kilometer a whole lot closer to that average of 95 grams and suddenly the electric car isn't looking quite so good and then i've looked at really dirty days um, for uh, electric production in the uk and you can go right up 474 is the one in march if the wind isn't blowing and it's a cloudy day or there's fog well, that average 189 climbs into the mid 300s, 350. Uh, and at 474 in our region, plug in my electric car, I'd be at 118.5 grams of CO2 per kilometre. Suddenly, it doesn't look nearly as clever uh, against the 95 grams. So the one point I want to make here is don't think the electric car is a zero emission because it's not. So after doing a little bit of homework and finding that out, as a potential buyer of an electric car, I'm in a bit of dilemma. And that's why I started testing all these cars in the first place. Because this is our sort of fleet at the moment. We have the family Range Rover, uh, and this is a 2006 model. Um, it, it's, fortunately it's Euro 4, just squeaks in there, but um, I know it's time to, um, to upgrade really doing absolutely fine, doesn't have stop start and things on it, and it's a bit of a family pet. And my wife's car, we've had this Panda 4x4 since 2005. We, you know, we looked at replacing this little Panda, but if we replace it with an electric car, it's electric mini, that's 23,000, uh, Fiat 500, 30,000 euros they're talking about. It all seems a bit too much money for a little runabout. And then, this is dilemma with this fleet average, 95 grams. This is just the sort of car that are no longer going to be produced. And yet they took no energy to produce, to actually manufacture this car. It's about a quarter of the energy goes into this than a big current SUV. Um, and it's such a shame that these sort of cars are no longer going to exist. So that's another reason for keeping it. I don't think my wife would like it to be replaced, but I just feel I want to upgrade. What do we go for? I was actually going to get the, um, I was having the BMW X5, the 45e hybrid, because I was really impressed with how that really did a lot of miles on electric, but also had the um, petrol engine. But I'm really quite keen to go down the EV route. It's something, of, going back, I've looked at the energy consumption of the Metcalf household for some time now. And that was the reason why the Sunday Times did the house, because we built this house and um, 
I worked out if I was actually going to heat it and do everything in the house, I was going to consume 14,000 litres of oil a year, which I just thought was ridiculous. So we went down the route of a heat pump, ground source heat pump, which basically uses the uh, residual, uh, residual heat in the soil that warms up over the summer. During the winter months, you drag it out, you slightly cool the soil around the, um, the house, and that heats the home and then in the summer it all warms up again and then you repeat and it's highly efficient because you're using a, a kilowatt of electricity to bring that heat natural heat that the sun's heated up the soil to the house so it's around 300 percent efficient and it completely transformed the heating bills on the house and the co2 um, production from the house by using the heat pump and um, just using electricity for the house rather than oil is about a tenth I worked out of what it would have been had we burnt 14,000 litres of oil and on the farm we do uh, minimal cultivations and we've dropped the amount of diesel we use on the farm by 50% if you want to know more about that well please watch Harry's Farm my other channel and I'll go into a bit more detail there so I thought the next um, natural step was to get an electric car until I started doing this background research. And I've also looked at generating our own electricity. On the house, we have a wind turbine and that uh, provides about a third of the power. I actually tried to get planning on the uh, farm for a major solar park, um, 16 megawatt system uh, going in, massive local resistance. Uh, I think I probably went too early um, it was all they were worried about the transport and disruption during the build process R you know rather than perhaps looking at the bigger picture when we have we need electricity it's going to happen we're going to consume more and more by the look of things if we go down this route because I think the the generation of renewable zero um, emission uh, electricity nearer where we all live is going to be absolutely critical going in the future so I'll probably have another go at that and we mustn't forget in all this about what I mentioned at the beginning about the inner city and the zero, zero tailpipe emissions. Hybrid cars do that as well as electric cars. And I feel for an awful lot of people, they're going to be more convenient. But they are expensive. Everything has a cost. Uh, and the car market is basically in turmoil because it actually costs the manufacturers more. They're not just charging more because they're cleverer cars. It's, it's their the cost of developing these cars and the, with this pandemic and everything that's happening even before it started the car market was over um, supplied by around 30 percent was the general reckoning now well who knows when we come out of this um, so i can't believe the change we're facing as a, uh, as a country in the car market where it's going to go and if i touch on the on the global picture what well, you've got to remember when we're worrying about um, CO2 emissions from the UK, we're only little. And I did some work on it last year to, just to see what the impact was. And it was a big switch. You could just turn the whole of the UK off. Didn't exist. Um, then just the rate of China's increase in CO2 emissions in 2018, that carried on. Then they would have wiped out the saving from the UK in under nine months. Then if you look at transport, well, transport is around, road transport is about 22% of um, CO2 emissions from the UK. Um, so the, everything that uh, on the road, either, right, let's just turn them off. We don't do any more miles, that everything is grounded forevermore. Uh, what's the same? Well, China again would wipe out the saving in about six, seven weeks. And then you consider that, well, actually, if it did go electric and current power uh, consumption means a saving of 50%, um, then it's three weeks saving. So you've got to get this in perspective of what we're dealing with. It is a global issue, the CO2 uh, problem. And you buying an electric car to take your kids to school isn't really going to make much difference. It, the, the world doesn't care a monkey's where the CO2 comes from. It's the amount it reduces by on a global scale. So we've got to think global on this one, and that's the tough bit. So what's it mean to the car consumer then in the UK? Bring it all, boil it back down. Um, one, 
don't be pushed, don't be rushed to go to an electric car at the moment. Um, it's the uh, manufacturers are having to produce them because of the new legislation from Europe. It, you know, so you're going to see enormous amount of media advertising play on the electric cars. But it, you've got to work out if it suits your needs. Home charging changes it completely if you're in a position to home charge and you're doing local runs. Tesla's um, their super highway, the um, charging network really impressed me. Those are a potential solution, but if we all dash for them, I think the, the regular charge network will be swamped. And if you don't have a home charge, it could be critical. So don't feel rushed, even though um, they are, you know, they're not, I'm not knocking electric cars, but you've got to be in the right situation to really make them work for you. The other thing, we basically change our vehicles way too often. And if this had been the next generation Range Rover and with AdBlue, um, if here you're out, you put in AdBlue, that really reduces NOx uh, particulates by around 90%. So we come back to that inner city issue and um, is there uh, pollution from the motor car in the inner city? Well, if you've got AdBlue late generation diesel, it's dramatically cleaner than anything went before with stop, start, etc. I wouldn't be even thinking about changing the vehicle with that. And then with petrol cars, well, from 2018, they got particulate filters and exhausts as well. So there's absolutely minimal amount of particulates coming out of the exhaust of a very modern car. The reason to change this isn't there when it is with perhaps an earlier model like this. You know, there we are. These cars are 15 years old. I think that's done 118,000 miles. A uh, little Panda, 111,000 miles. We've changed a few bushes, I think, on the Panda. Bulb oil bought it a battery. Cars last an awful lot longer now than they ever used to. The, mobili the mobility offered by a Ford Focus, to, you know, not very old, two, three thousand pound, is extraordinary. Um, you can fill it up anywhere. It will continue working. The other thing to remember is I don't think petrol pumps are going to disappear anytime soon. But it's not all private cars. There is a huge amount of commercial traffic out there. You've only got to look during this pandemic. How are all your goods getting delivered off Amazon, etc.? I suggest it's probably a Mercedes Sprinter van or a Ford or a whatever coming to your house. And then there's all the HGV fleet around the world and delivering goods. We're so reliant now on the road haulage uh, to bring the goods to the factories, to, uh, to the um, supermarkets, whatever. So that has to be diesel powered at the moment. There is no electric solution. Yes, I know it's a Tesla truck, but it's way off commercial reality um, because of the high demand. It's just not suited to a battery. That's why I actually think in the future, this, this electric may be just a stepping stone to the real future, which will be hydrogen. And there's a lot of work on hydrogen. A lot of more people are betting on hydrogen, um, different ways of powering, whether it's a fuel cell or um, actually um, another engine. I think the fuel cell is probably the most reliable solution because that will power the trucks and the commercial fleets as well as our private cars so maybe this electric is just a little uh, time in um, in the history of the motor car and we go on to somewhere else i don't know but it's certainly one to watch the farm the combine the tractor there's no electric solution for that that's really meaningful it's going to come in anytime soon and those fleets, I, you know, I was brought up in Birkenhead and uh, the streets where I lived, there was no chance of on street charging really. That isn't that world. I'm going to run around in my Fiesta because it's so, it's so flipping efficient. It didn't cost me much. It cost me buttons and it works and it's great. So I can't see a sudden change to electric. It feels like a middle England solution if I was going to term it. So that's the first thing. The other thing I just, as I said, we can't consume quite as regularly. If you do buy an electric car, I've described them as white goods before. Well, how do you treat your white goods? You only replace it when it's worn out. An electric car has fewer uh, moving parts. Um, long as that battery stays together and it looks like they don't um, degrade nearly as quickly as people thought, it is a 10, 15 year purchase. It will do half a million miles. Go look on the internet how many hundreds of thousands of miles some Tesla Model S's are doing. So we've got to stop, I think as a society, if we really care about global warming, consuming the number of calves that we have been in the past. Just keep them longer 
way longer. And if you halve your miles, that is the best way of reducing your you know, impact, CO2 impact. Have a look at how you're heating the house. Um, an average three bed house consumes around 2,700 litres a year, that's 600 gallons, but 30 mpg, that's 18,000 miles. Um, if you're doing 40 mpg, that's 24,000 miles. So your house, again, the planet doesn't care where the CO2 comes from, from your house or from your car. So have, I think we've all got to look at our CO2 emissions, at the way we live our lives, our flights, etc. So all a bit heavy, fascinating as an observer to watch. Um, as it as these you know as it evolves, the collector cars all around the back. I have no worries about those. They have created. I haven't touched on the actual amount of CO2 um, release from the manufacture of cars. That's a whole thorny subject on its own. But the collector cars, they don't do the mileage. They exist. They are pieces of art um, that will continue forevermore. Um, we'll be able to fuel them, they do tiny mileage, and the impact on the planet just is nothing. It's near zero. So it's a really big subject. It's why I've hesitated even doing this video, uh, but it's fascinating and it's serious because there is something going on in the climate. I know as a farmer, it's not right, and we've got to do something about it. And the final touch, I think, I've just got to say, is if, if you look at the charts of CO2 um, production, it kicked off in 1950, and there is an element that it is very closely linked to the um, world population. And there's a lot of us, we're all chasing this Western life. It's up to us, I think, to say, we've got to calm down. We can live a very happy life, um, but we're just going to get a bit clever about it. And the other thing this pandemic has taught us is we can work from home, which I think is going to make a big difference to the number of miles we actually do with the cars. They're going to be much more targeted miles. We're not going to be quite so wasteful. And the electric has another place, I think. And if you look at this, what I'm here, this electric bike I find is just an extraordinary device. It somehow makes cycling way more friendly, do many more miles on it. And it's still great exercise because this bike um, actually powers when you pedal. You have to pedal and then it assists. It's like having a giant wind behind you or something. Suddenly the bike becomes this friendlier thing. Uh, and you can see that this could come a, a commuter device with the cycle rows, etc. I think this has a real future because it hasn't got the bulk of trying to electrify a flipping great SUV. I mean, the trouble we've got in the car industry is we've all got a taste of a nice big um, SUV and we're getting weights of two and a half, three tonnes when we're trying to electrify, which isn't the most efficient thing. We're trying to get efficiency and low consumption. The SUV isn't the right place to start. But if you start with a bike, well, this is you know about 20 kilos, which is heavier for a bike, but my goodness, it has some range. It's great fun to ride. I think they've got to develop, they've got to think about security and how we do it. But if the Boris bikes were electric, I think it would revolutionize how um, people actually commute in cities. Or are they just going to do less miles anyway? So the whole thing is such an emotive subject. And I don't, I confess, I don't know it. I'm just an observer. Um, but if you found this interesting, I'd love to know your thoughts and if you have some expertise and just where you think it's all going to go, then please use the comments below and I, I'm going to be fascinated to see what you, you add there and what knowledge you can add to this uh, discussion, shall we say, on our electric cars, the answer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Very different. Back to normal service, I think in the next week or so. If you have enjoyed this uh, video, well, keep watching, keep subscribing because there'll be more videos coming along very soon.